Welcome back to episode four of When in Rome. The series where I teach you how to make the four classic Roman pastas. Today, we're doing the big dog, the international bestseller, La Carbonara. <laughs> I'm gonna start once again with the guanciale, the cured pig's cheek. This rind on the outside here, that's gotta come off. And then I'm gonna cut this into strips like batons. Let the knife do the work and just kind of glide through. Just like with the grigia, I'm gonna put the guanciale into the pan and I'm then gonna bring it up. And that's because I want to render out a lot of this fat. And if I throw it straight into a ripping hot pan, it's gonna crisp up too quickly. The flat, the, the flat, the fat is what carries the flavor through the dish. So if you have a little look over here, you can hear this starting to sizzle. And you can see some of this fat just starting to like render out. Some people do a mixture of egg yolks and whole eggs, but I think it's just a little bit nicer when you do only yolks. The other thing that kind of makes up the major component of the sauce is the cheese. A lot of chefs in Rome, a lot of restaurants in Rome use a mixture of pecorino romano and parmesan. And that's just because this cheese is delicious, but it's really intense, it's really salty. To soften it up a little bit, a lot of places use a mix of the two because this is more gentle and more buttery, the Parmesan. And that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna do about a 60-40 pecorino to Parmesan. I don't need to be too precious with it, but something like that is about right. I'll give it a quick. Much quicker than just standing there grating it forever. Ain't nobody got time for that. If we can pour that in like that, start giving this a mix. And we're gonna make like a kind of like a paste, yeah? So like a paste of egg yolks and cheese. And then I'm gonna grab my pepper and do quite a, quite a good few turns of a pepper mill in there on a nice amount of heat. Just to offset all of the kind of richness of the eggs and the cheese and the fat. So give that another stir through. And then I can set this aside. If you have a, if you have a little look in here now, this is done. So that's kind of, you can see that a lot of the fat is rendered out and they've gone all nice and crispy. And I'm just gonna grab a little bowl and keeping the fat in the pan, I'm just gonna kind of scoop, scoop out these little guys. Then I've got this fat and I'm just gonna leave that in the pan. And we'll come back to that later. So my pasta water is back up to a boil. I'm gonna season it now. And I don't want it too, too salty because I'm gonna use that water to finish the dish. Also, we've got salty stuff already. I'm gonna grab about 200 grams of pasta, something like that. I'm gonna give it a little twist into the middle and let go. All right, let me give this a little, a little try. Mm. So, I could just eat plain salty pasta to be fair. Let's grab this and I'm gonna go straight into this pan with the fat, like that. And you see that I'm carrying over some of this cooking water. See that draining out there? That's a good thing. This is gonna be the base of our sauce. And again, this is another reason why it's important that the pasta water isn't too salty. So it's not as salty as it would be if I was putting the pasta with like a tomato sauce, right? Then it would be more salty. This one, not so much just turn off my pasta water and I'm gonna put this back on a low heat, like that. I'm gonna start moving this about and what we wanna do is combine the pasta, some of that starchy pasta water and the fat that was already in the pan. And by agitating the pasta and moving it around, we're gonna release even more starch and then you're gonna to start to build this kind of glossy, creamy emulsion, right? Ooh. One kind of common mistake with making this dish is that people put the eggs in while the pasta's still on the heat um, or while it's still too hot. And then you end up with scrambled egg spaghetti, which isn't actually that nice. Um, so I'm gonna just move this around a little bit off the heat, just to cool it down slightly. So I've got my egg mix here. I'm gonna do one more thing, I'm gonna grab just like a little splash of that water and pour that straight in here. And then I'm gonna give this another mix, like that. This is a little bit of tempering for the egg yolk. So it's another good, good way to stop it scrambling when you stick it in with the pasta. 
So you get all of that in there nicely. And then we're gonna quickly start working this, start moving it around. And you can grab your thumbs again and just start to give it a nice mix, keep it moving, and it's gonna thicken up real quick, get real kind of glossy and thick and rich. I'm gonna loosen it up slightly with another little splash of that cooking water. Just mix that through. Oh, the last thing that I need to put back in here is the meat. And just fold it through, and that way it's gonna stay nice and crunchy and delicious. A little pasta water in there. By the time you've walked over to the sink to pour it out, your bowl's nice and warm. So let's give it a little, grab it up like that, and then I showed you this one before, but I'll show you again. As you start to lower it down, just give the bowl a little spin. And then you end up with a nice kind of, nice little nest on the plate there. So a little bit more cheese on top. And there you go. That is the best way I know how to make spaghetti carbonara. Nice work. <laughs> there you go, carbonara, the king of the Roman pastas. Give us a like, drop a comment, subscribe, and um, might see you soon. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> no, for what? I should like, maybe I should do this for a job or something. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> maybe people could film you get paid for this, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll grab these and then we'll turn them. Why? That's the base. That's the, that base is serious. <laughs> <laughs>